man, it's uh, really been a while. Are we sure that people are even going to care if we do this? Dude, of course they will. I mean, did you see the positive reaction to just the trailer we dropped? Although, to be completely fair, they could just be excited to watch two children fight using the family pet and a deck of cards. I uh, actually kind of want to see that happen now. Okay, we're getting way off track right now, and it's a little too late to back out of the show now. Dude, you're telling me. It took me a few months to track these bastards down. Ash and Yugi just travel everywhere by foot. Do you know how hard it is to track people who have no paper trail and never sleep anywhere other than tents? God. A a anyway, we need to start really soon or they could honestly escape. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this. Exactly. So let's go ahead and grab that microphone and give these people what they came for. Two mildly funny idiots voiced by one guy making fun of their favorite characters before making them kill each other? You know, I was going to say a match to remember, but that also works, I suppose. Uh, anyway, we should probably turn on the lights and probably, you know, start this thing. Welcome one and all to Counter Breaker, the only versus show hosted by people with synergy so damn good you'd assume they're the same person. Holy shit, Wiz and Boopstick are voiced by the same guy? <sighs> I'm Grifflepuff, your badass and nerdy host. And I'm Nameless Co-host. Yes, that's my name, and honestly, I've just come to terms with it at this point. And today, on the first ever episode of Counter Breaker, we're going to give you a quick and dirty rundown on today's combatants, and then pit them against each other in a duel to the death. So, for the first episode of Counter Breaker, we'll be taking a look at Ash Ketchum, the most iconic Pokemon trainer and champion of Pallet Town. And Yami Yugi, or Yugi Moto, the master duelist with a dual personality. <laughs> you, you, you get it? Duel? Like, like duel monsters? It's the, the card game in the show? Maybe the show was a mistake. Too late now. But before we get to today's matchup, we actually have a sponsor. How the hell did you get a sponsor before you've even finished episode one? Natural talent. And also the sponsor's the same guy who did the music for this episode, so we definitely owe him one. Uh-huh. All right, well, I'll leave you to that, and uh, I'll go ahead and check in on the combatants, make sure everything's all set for the fight. So let me ask you all a question. Do you like VR? Do you like shooting things with guns? Do you like colors? Do you fucking hate garbage and want to eradicate it from the face of the planet? Well then, do I have a VR game for you? Uh, th that is if you have an Oculus Quest. Anyway, introducing Trash Gun. This game was made by a brand new indie game studio by the name of John Ray Games. In this game, you play as a trash man in space and you use your cool ass laser blasters to tear through trash like Star Wars protagonists tear through stormtroopers. But there's a catch. You can only destroy trash with a matching color laser. If you fail to destroy the trash with its respective colored laser, then you're probably gonna get fired. And honestly, getting fired from being a garbage man would be really embarrassing. So uh, let, let's hope you know how to tell the difference between colors. So what are you waiting for? After you're done here, go ahead and click the link in the description and get ready to blow up some trash like it's the 4th of frickin' July. All right, uh, well, the sponsor's done, so we can actually get started on the actual episode. Now, where'd my co-host go? So in this corner, we have Ash Ketchum, hailing from Pallet Town. This teenager, I say that with heavy quotation marks, has spent a large part of his life trying to become the very best that no one ever was. And he failed miserably. I mean, holy shit, it took Ash like seven years to win a league, and every time he goes to a new region, he gets his ass handed to him by some low-level Pokemon. Well, I, I mean, yeah, but it doesn't change the fact that Ash is going to stomp Yuki's ass into the ground. I mean, look at Ash throw this tree. The man's strong as shit. Oh yeah, because this one will definitely be a fist fight. Okay, you know what, that's actually a fair point. Well, Ash does always have his trusty Pokemon by his side that he can command to get the upper hand in a duel, such as Pikachu, his lightning-fast right-hand man, who can control lightning, blitz opponents, and piss off everyone who plays competitive Smash Bros. Pikachu busted. Pikachu busted. Nice. Who cares about electric mice when his opponent is packing some ridiculous firepower? Some of that firepower, need I remind you, get referred to as gods. Literal gods. Well, if his Pikachu doesn't impress you, how about his Greninja, who can throw shurikens made of water strong enough to cut through metal, and he can freaking teleport. He's basically Kermit if you are a Mortal Kombat ninja. It's time to play the music. It's time to beat bad guys. It's time to kill some people on the Mortal Kombat tonight. Man, this show's comedy can only go up from here. I mean, there's no way it can go any lower, right? Right? Anyway, the last Pokemon I've noticed is Charizard, a giant fire-breathing dragon who can, well, spit fireballs and slash things with his big slashy claws. All right, to be completely fair, I don't think Yugi's smart enough to deal with Flare Blitz spam, so uh, I think Charizard might be a bit of an issue this fight. You know, I would correct you, but we're trying to keep this little pre-analysis section kind of short, so uh, how about we start talking about that kid with the... Wait a second, is that a fucking belt around his neck? Yes, it is. What kind of kinky shit is he into? 
that's not really that important, honestly. What is important is what Yugi is packing in his deck and that puzzle he wears around his neck. You mean that weird triangle thing that looks like it weighs a fucking ton? Man must have scoliosis for days. Yes, that would be his Millennium Puzzle that allows Yugi to go into Balls Drop mode. Or, in other words, he switches from the kind-hearted Yugi Moto to the master duelist and vicious pharaoh named Yami Yugi. Kinda coincidental that they're both named Yugi. Okay, so he sounds like Perfect Cell, which admittedly makes him sound cooler. But what, he learns a few extra card tricks? Who cares? Well, you see, that's just the thing. It's not a mere card trick. Yugi has been known to bend the whims of fate to always get the cards he needs when he needs them. But if you were to ask him about that, he'd probably just tell you some stupid shit about the heart of the cards and friendship and yada yada yada, you know, all your generic anime bullshit. Uh-huh. Well, I fail to see how picking what cards he gets next is going to save him from Greninja. You know, the fucking ninja frog. Well, luckily those aren't ordinary cards, buddy. They're dual monster cards. These cards are capable of summoning holographic versions of the monsters and spells on them. Oh, holograms. I'm so scared. What are they going to do? Glow in my general direction? Oh, yeah. All they do is glow. Tell that to Kaiba. Or the fucking moon. Oh, fuck. Did Yugi just kill that guy? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and shut up now. I mean, yeah, he definitely has killed some people. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and show off some of Yugi's best cards. Such as Yugi's trusty companion, Dark Magician, who can attack with powerful dark magic attacks that put all sorts of weird funky filters on the screen before blowing someone the fuck up. With Monster Reborn, he can resurrect fallen creatures, and he has access to the Celtic Guardian, who wields a fucking sword. A guy with a sword versus a teleporting ninja frog. I think the ninja frog would take that one. Again, ninja frog. It's so badass. Why do you keep trying to summon this lame shit to fight it? Alright, but what about the gods Yugi can summon, like Exodia, the Forbidden One, who can obliterate every creature in the game and is considered unbeatable? Unless you're some nerd who likes bugs. God, Yugi's so fucking dumb. Or there's also Silver the Sky Dragon, who can easily fuck up other dual monsters or delete an enemy's health bar and jump force. Dude, I don't understand how that stupid move kills Goku so quickly. Goku fights gods for fun. How the hell does that card kill him so quickly? Uh, natural talent? Ugh, Yu-Gi-Oh is dumb, and jump force makes no sense. Anyway, that's enough talk. Let's get this thing started. Yes, finally we can get to the bloodshed. Here we go. It's time to duel. Charizard. It's time to duel. down for a second. an excellent battle. Damn, that was brutal. Pikachu fucking died. No, not my boy Ash. How the hell did he lose? Actually, we don't do that in this show. Yeah, no no end analysis this time. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. We're not doing that now? Okay, uh, I, I mean, I'm still upset that Ash lost, but what the hell do we do now? Well, we show up the next time, of course. All right, well, hey, I got good news for you, buddy. I went ahead and got the next set of combatants already, and I even made the trailer. Just go ahead and click play on that trailer, no questions asked, and that's our next time, all right? Oh? Okay, let's see what you got planned for next time. 
Uh, I actually haven't seen this yet, so let's pray to God it's not terrible. Well then, whenever you're ready. I have an idea. I can feel it coming over me. I feel it all around me. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. It's my destiny. Cause I'm tired of settle me. It's waiting to come up now. No matter what, no matter how. I know I'll make it through somehow. Cause when the roof is so long, I'll still be holding on. I'm gonna keep on going. I know I'll be strong. Yeah, it is just the point. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, Ronald McDonald versus Lord Fierce. Let's go.